The hardest of the URC quarterfinals to call, by some distance in my mind, is the one that will be happening at Scotston tomorrow night. The last of the four quarterfinals, Glasgow against the Stormers. I will be there for this one, so uh, make sure you check back in on the channel after the full-time whistle tomorrow night and I'll have my thoughts from Scotston itself and see who and what I can find when I'm up there up north. Really excited about seeing that one. If you appreciate the rugby content, we'll hit subscribe. Leave your comments down below. Give the video a thumbs up as well. And there's been some churn in the team selections as well. For Glasgow, skipper Kyle Stain, he returns. And George Turner, on his last ever performance for Glasgow before he heads off to Japan, makes his 100th appearance at Scotston. Will it be his last... Well, it'll be his last game at home. Will it be his last game? He'll absolutely be hoping that he gets to turn out for appearance number 101. And another little interesting subplot is that Hugh Jones is up against his former team. He returned last week after injury to gather a bit of um, form and momentum and form that international and club partnership with Sione Tuipolotu. Hugh Ipolotu will be out in force at Scotston. Uh, other than that, it's, there's internationals everywhere, isn't there? And there's, there's some handy players on the bench. And like I say, some key men returning at a key time. Whilst for the Stormers, who have been in great form recently, they've had the form. Right, so Glasgow haven't had the form. They've lost some games that they would have been disappointed about and just kind of tailed off a little bit. But they've got big players coming back. Stormers have had great form, which they're carrying into the playoffs. But they've lost a couple of key men. And there's another one to add to Damian Villemza, um, to add to Angelo Davids, who's suspended. Evan Ruiz, concussion in training this week means he is not able to play. So Willie Engelbrecht is the open side flanker for the Stormers and he has got a big job on his hands. They don't really have a, a fetcher in the traditional sense in this back row, I would, I would suggest. I mean, Evan Ruiz is kind of, he's always been the number eight primarily and occasionally played as a blindside flanker, but he seems to have picked up and he's just such an all-round athlete that he can do it all. And um, yeah, yeah. Willie Engelbrecht has got a big challenge on his hands up against that Scottish back row. And I will be doing a combined 23-man squad in a second. And it's quite interesting when you look at the matchups. The front row rotates. The bench is now starting. The starting team from last week is on the bench. Six fantastic front row forwards. I've got no worries there. But look at that. Uh, Brock Harris defying his age and just playing brilliant rugby. Uh, Joseph Dweber, who I really rate, he gets a lot of stick and I understand his arrows at line-out time have been a bit wayward, but just as a force of nature around the pitch, he's frightening. And Franz Mullerber is just a tank and an, and an anchor at scrum time. So, And with Marnie Libok uh, behind, Warwick Gallant back at full-back and Gomazulu is in midfield with Dan Duplessis in the absence of Damien Willemser. They've got some decent players. Uh, as for a combined 23-man squad, this is how I see it. In the forwards, the entire front row from the Stormers. Um, and, and the Glasgow front row is perfectly good. Uh, one lock apiece. That kind of big number four lock. Scott Cummings is excellent. Uh, Ruben Van Heerden this season has been, been, I think he's, every time I've seen him, really athletic, rangy, good line-out forward. So I've got him in. And I would have had Evan Ruiz in, in, in that back row, but I've gone for the entire Glasgow back row. Like Hack Chiva Delmani is excellent, but Jack Dempsey's been having a fantastic season all season long for Glasgow. Diamani was brilliant early on and kind of has been in and out of the starting team and hasn't carried that form all the way through. Jack Dempsey has. Darge and Fagerson. Those three are gonna have to get at Marnie Libok. Although that might just play into the Stormers hands because Libok is quite used to uh, flankers, back rows just trying to hassle him and, and squeeze in for time that just creates space for other players and with Ngomazulu outside and with Galant out the back they've um, they've got firepower um, I, I really am a big fan of George Horn at nine I think Herschel Yanchis is an excellent scrum half I just don't I, I, he compared to some of the other South African scrum halves and tell me if you disagree down below he just seems like not quite to have that same spark of pace George Horn has got that he's a genuine running threat around the base and that's something the Stormers will have to watch out for and that midfield for Glasgow is, is a big route back for them. Like I say, Ngoma Zulu is an awesome player. Surely he'll be involved in the Springbok squad. Um, 
on the periphery and maybe a, you know he's, he's got that number 23 shirt because he can play in so many different positions and without Willems that, that could be a shout but Tua Pelotu and Hugh Jones have played so many times together for club and country I think that's a real route for them one winger apiece and Gallant at fullback but look at the bench this is where I think it could be won this game's going to be so tight and I think the scrum's going to be huge I think Marnie Leboc uh, goal kicking is going to be huge for the Stormers as well uh, but I think that bench could just bring some heat, more heat than, than Glasgow have got uh, coming off the bench. And that is where, when, when you think of Andrew Hugo Venter, someone of that talent, I've, I've gone for him ahead of George Turner. I think he's been playing brilliantly and could arguably be feel unhappy not to be in the starting team against Dweber. But that's it. They've got a 23-man squad here. It's going to be so tight. This genuinely could go either way. Evan Ruiz not being there, I was predicting a very narrow Stormers win. I think that the odds just got narrower now. It's This is flip of a coin. This is going to be top two inches. Who hits the goal kicks? Who takes the chances when they're on? Who doesn't have a brain fade and do something stupid? It's going to be tight and tense. I'm still going to just go for a Stormers win by the narrowest of margins and predicting them to go on and play Munster at Thoman Park next week. But um, cannot wait to be there at Scotston for this one. Cannot wait to see you checking back in on the channel. See you on the next one.